It is estimated that between 30 and 60 million bison once roamed North America in giant herds. But by 1900, there were fewer than 1,000 left, according to the National Bison Association. Uh, today, their numbers are increasing thanks in part to bison ranchers who are raising the animals for meat. And our latest Wisconsin report, Twin Cities Live co-hosts Elizabeth, Elizabeth Reese and Ben Lieber hopped in the car for a road trip, traveling almost two hours to Cameron to meet the rancher behind North Star Bison, where the soil is just as important as the animals. This is a great day. Anytime I'm on a Wisconsin farm, I feel very happy about it. Yeah, come across the river to the good side. It's it's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say the good side. It's, yeah. the, it's the other side. <laughs> sure, you know. There's fungi right there, like a, There's a, little, uh, like a little mushroom. Oh, yeah. This is the first time We're this is ever We're about to get happened. psychedelic, and aren't we? I've been <laughs> to a lot of farms. I love a farm. No one has ever just picked up poop and been like, you should smell it. And yeah. that's what you just did. I did. Sean. Yeah. And it, yeah. it doesn't I mean, smell it like does. anything. Like, Hi everybody, we're gonna go that? viral with this. That's Just right. like Earth. It's yeah. like it's nothing. It's, it doesn't smell like poop. You gotta tell us about your farm. Tell us what's happening at North Star Bison and about how you got into this business. It's a, a hobby that's out of control, as my dad says. <laughs> so that's it was a great it was it was yeah. a fascination yeah. of, you know, when my dad was growing up, he just loved the West and bison were and an integral part of every single stage of development for this country. He was just always had this fascination with the animal and always wanted to get a couple or, or somehow be affiliated with bison and found out that he could actually buy a couple in, back in the early 90s and so he started looking around and uh, found out that Blue Mountain State Park in southern Minnesota down by Laverne uh, was having like a, a, dis, uh, a sale to sell off some excess animals and so he went down and bought a two-year-old bull and a heifer calf and that was the start of just the, now, just the one, just one of each. That's one of it. each. It's like Noah's each. Ark, two by two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Marching right in. At some point, a couple years in, uh, my mom says, ah, I think this, need, <laughs> this little hobby needs to make some money. Because <laughs> it, it was a money pit for a little bit. Our background was in the health club industry, training athletes. And I realized the qualities of meat that the bison have was something that a lot of people were looking for. He sort of stumbled upon the nutritional value outside of the cultural significance. Mm -hmm. But then the big difference that you guys have versus other conventional places, this is a regenerative agricultural practice as well. Like Correct. how did that come into play? Ultimately, it was my dad's passion for the animal and, and the respect that he had for them and the dignity that he wanted them to live by. He felt that they deserved the best. So we have our ecosystem here that we replicate basically how bison were to live before man have arrived and colonized essentially uh, this country. Ultimately it, it creates a really, really healthy diverse ecosystem on the land, a really, really healthy uh, product for, for humans and it creates uh, a life that's second to none for the animals as well. well. You can tell when you're out here because every farm you go to smells like a farm. Mm -hmm. This just smells like earth. Yeah. It yeah. smells like the land yeah. and I know that a big part of what you guys do and what you're so proud of is that from birth to end of life, your animals are here. Explain Correct. how that's a little bit different from maybe different farming or ranching operations. Yeah, in standard farming practice, you have a cow-calf operation that is just creating babies essentially, and then they get weaned away from mom at a fairly early age, uh, and then put into usually a feed production type system that's very intensive on, on heavy, high calorie diet to be able to produce the biggest animal that they can as fast as they possibly can yeah. and so they're it's uh, contradictory to give those animals lots of space because space is expensive mm -hmm. land is not cheap as everyone knows they're so, not making any more of it yeah exactly so they confine them to small areas and then bring in feed stuffs to to um to make them grow fast and so we're kind of the, we're the opposite we're, we we look at how nature uh, is designed to function and we try to replicate that as much as possible. You guys started regenerative agriculture and practices before it was like in vogue and kind of cool and kind of hipster yeah. and all that stuff. Probably before they even named it. That. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's still largely, I'd say, from a worldwide global standpoint, even the U.S., it's still kind of unknown, mm -hmm. you know, this whole yeah. regen ag. Yeah. What's been the response between you guys, what you guys do here, even just locally with the other local farmers, how you guys do things, yeah. like how, how was it received back you know, 20 years ago, and how is it received now? People didn't even know how to categorize us 20 years ago. Um, we were the the hippie people who <laughs> I, I don't know. It, <laughs> we were very we were very on the outside. I very I don't I don't even know where we would fall on the map. We were just one, probably weren't even on the map. You know. Yeah. Um, they were just different. And that's a very Midwest thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> about something you're not sure about. They're different. They're different. That's the different family over there. Different family. Kids, don't go play with them. They're a little different. <laughs> Beautiful place. Uh, Sean says the easiest way to incorporate bison in your diet is to just use the same cut in place of beef in recipes. You can purchase North Star Bison from their retail location in Cameron, Wisconsin at Toxie Free on Main Street in Stillwater, or you can have it shipped right to your door. We posted links at minnesotalive.com.